Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't watched the first part of this two-part video series, I am moving house, so this set might not be the same the next time we see each other. Maybe it will, I don't know. If anything, it might have just a few less things on the shelves. In the last video, I spoke about all my DC products and that included comics, merchandise, and things I had actually made myself. In this one, I am talking about Marvel, Disney, and anime products that I own. And this is all sparked from a comment back on my Justice League trailer reaction video, where Colton Atkins said you should totally show off any comics you may have. But without further ado, let's get into some of the stuff that I have related to Disney, Marvel, and anime. In my last video, I spoke about being able to make certain props from films that you might like to save a few extra bucks. Honestly, sometimes being creative is hard. So go out and buy yourself what you need. This is my hammer. You may have seen it in a fair few videos. I'm very proud of it. Even though I broke it during the filming for the Thor Ragnarok trailer reaction. If you look closely, it takes a lot to break this. This is actually quite hefty. It landed on my floor and not on the cushion, but a bit of super glue, I popped it back on. You can see the crack, but it was kind of ironic, I guess, considering Hela broke the hammer in Thor Ragnarok. Keeping on theme with Thor's hammer, last Christmas, along with the Master Race comic that my brother got me, my mum purchased me a Hela action figure. The best thing about this is actually the story that goes behind the purchasing of the action figure. I have two older brothers and well we kind of all fit into the shoes of the three siblings in Thor Ragnarok. Albeit we actually love each other. I thought you'd be glad to see me. Surprise. Hello. Hi. I am worthy. Now in every one of my videos is the book stand, just there, which is right now holding the GLaDOS blackboard. When I'm doing the specific video and I have the character in one of my encyclopedias, I will be putting that book there. With Marvel, I've gotten this one here. Now I'm pretty sure I actually bought this one from Costco. Costco, do not count it out as some really good pop culture books. I have bought two volumes of The Walking Dead for probably, I might be exaggerating, but probably half the price of what I would normally pay at a bookstore. And if it's not Marvel, then it'll be DC. Marvel me. On a side note, I completely forgot to show you this kind of encyclopedia in the DC video. This isn't just about the characters. The other two are about the characters. This is about the history of DC publishing. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. Now this next one can kind of be argued to either be an anime or a cartoon because it's drawn in an anime style and it has a lot of Asian influences, but it was actually made in America. Avatar The Last Airbender. This is like a behind the scenes journey from Mike and Brian as they try and create this magnificent world. It's just a beautiful, beautiful artistic journey looking at how the characters progress, how they started, how Toph was originally a male character. Before you die hard fans, this is definitely something you want to own. If you are an Avatar fan like I am, and not the kind with the blue people, please, and not the live action film. <sighs> but if you are a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender, and even a fan of Avatar The Legend of Korra, I haven't seen this done before and I do really like it. I mean, maybe it has been done a lot, but the comic series being put into a large hardcover book. Having it like this is like reading it with a big screen TV or at the cinemas. It's just so beautiful. And it also has notes from the creators in the margins so you can really understand what's going on. And I think I just opened the page to Cabbage Man. If you don't watch this show, you're not going to know what I'm going on about. But watch it. It's one of those series that, yes, it was developed for, I think, like, 12-year-olds around that age. That's actually when I started watching it. But the layers and depth to the story, the character growths, is something you have to be there for. You have to see it and read it, obviously. Now, this little piece... Oh, little 
piece of Disney merchandise actually was my 18th birthday present and I was so confused opening it because it was as long as a keyboard and I was thinking I mean this is cool but I got my, got my piano um, <laughs> that year I was also performing as the white witch in the high school play so with my love of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and the Narnia book series as my 18th birthday present I got this bad boy <laughs> The legalities of this sort of thing in Australia is that I can own this, but I'm not allowed to sharpen it. So it's not sharpened, but due to proper protocol, never touch the blade anyway, because the oils from the fingers can actually damage it. I actually haven't pulled this out the sheath in a while. Hopefully it's still pretty good. People tend to want to grab the blade. I'm like, don't. <laughs> Here we go. Actually has the inscription as well on the blade. So let me read it. Oh, it's locked in now. There we go. When Aslan shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. So good. Oh, listen to that click. But it is very long. And I mean... <laughs> so it is a replica, although the one in the film is actually a single-handed sword. This one is a two-handed sword. See, I actually got the lion on there as well. Wow. Oh gosh, where do I put it now? Yeah, I like just completely walloped my camera. <gasps> So hopefully we can get you back in some sort of order. Now I don't own many Marvel comics, but we'll start with some that I've been reading recently and that is She-Hulk and I've gotten these two right here. Two very different comics, I guess. I don't really know about how Marvel runs their issues. I'm very new to this, but I would assume that this one's more the classic She-Hulk where she is always green, always super strong. And this one is after, a, I think, Civil War, I'm not sure, where something changes and all of a sudden she's a bit more like Bruce Banner in that she becomes She-Hulk. She has to fight back like a constant rage as well. Ooh, bendy. I have found that I do really like her. She's like, she's what I would want the next Marvel Netflix television series to be. She is almost every single one of those characters put together. I mean, she is a lawyer, like Matt Murdock. She is, well, she's a woman, like Jessica Jones. But not only that, she has, she has a bit of like an emotional journey like Jessica Jones as well in this one. She's like Luke Cage in that she is super strong, bulletproof, but she also kind of has, in this one, quite a cheery nature. So she has the cheery nature, but she also has the emotional journey of Jessica Jones. I'm not really sure how to connect her to Iron Fist, but I would still love it to be a Netflix series. I'm gonna stick this one in really quickly because Novastream actually has another magazine out this month that I've written a review for Ant-Man and the Wasp as well as The Incredibles. This one here is one of the older issues where we interviewed Thor of Oz. He's actually a part of my hot glue cosplay documentary. So if you wanted to check that out, make sure you pop onto Issue, the Nova Stream Network, or even Facebook. It'll be on that Facebook page too. Even if you follow their Instagram on Nova Stream AU. This one here was actually my favorite comic in high school, I think. And it's a single issue, which is very different to what I usually do. This one's called Truth or Death. It's one of three. I actually had to read second and third online, which is unfortunate. I'd like to own those two. I should buy them. If anything with Marvel, I'm probably more a mutant fan, an X-Men fan. And that might be because I really love the animated series X-Men Evolution. Oh, and I do love Hugh Jackman. I mean, who doesn't love Hugh Jackman? Now we are kind of going outside of the realms of, I guess, anime and Marvel and Disney, which in the end I don't have that many things about anime or manga. But this, my friends, is no ordinary box. Ollivander would be ashamed if you'll think that. No, this is a box for Professor McGonagall's wand. I went to the Warner Brothers the Warner Brothers Studio Tour? Harry Potter Warner. I can't remember what it's called, but I bought myself a wand. <laughs> and after watching the vlogs from Philip DeFranco and the ones that Joe Nation does, yes, it is a stick of plastic, but it means so much more. So this one here is McGonagall's wand. And although while reading the books, I did actually I, I, I loved Ginny's character. I thought Ginny was amazing and I considered buying her wand, but I just didn't click with it. Uh, and yeah, well, the wand chooses the wizard, Master Harry. I, I don't even know if that's right. 
It's been a while since I read the books, but I did, I don't know, I, I just, I really liked this one. And McGonagall is flippin' incredible. Don't get me started on how amazing she is. And, well, I mean, that's just, that's it. She's amazing. Maggie Smith, am I right? Damn. Thank you so much for watching, guys, this quick rundown of my Disney, Marvel, and anime things. And I mean, we had a little bit of Harry Potter in there too, so that's always cool. Go ahead and check out my previous video where I talk about my DC comics and collectibles. I have a lot more of that realm of things than any other, so that video had its own little section. Now, before I forget, with the Dumbo trailer reaction that was taken down for copyright strikes, I did have a little bit of an announcement at the very end for some people I've done a podcast with. So you can find that podcast on DCN sometime this week. That's DC Nova Stream through Nova Stream AU. But to tell you a little bit about them, I'm going to cut the end of that video. Also guys, if you don't have enough Australian pop culture reactions in your life, pop on over to the Fortress Nerd. They've got some awesome trailer reactions, some unboxing, and also an awesome goodies video on what they got from Sydney Supernova. So make sure you go check them out. Make sure you pop your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I have been Brittany and you have been watching Brit Girl. gonna miss this set or not. I mean, it's been good. It's come a long way. I think I'll miss the wall. This is wallpaper.